With me, Daphne Lim on 938 Live. Today, we're going to find out how office work kills. Uh, Like we don't already know how office work kills. No, not really. Now, you see, the thing is, many Singaporeans on average spend eight hours or more in the office. uh, And uh, many of them don't actually know how to cultivate a healthy and safe workplace environment. According to a study by the Singapore General Hospital, it was found that 73 3.4% of the 324 respondents reported experiencing pain in at least one of their body parts. So the Workplace Safety and Health Council uh, says that ergonomic health issues such as stiff necks, aches and pains in the back, shoulders or hands actually costs Singapore $3.5 billion a year. Now, that's where we should be trying to reduce expenditure, I think, which is why we're talking to Prof. Chia Ki Singh. He is the Dean of Saw Sui Hock School of Public Health at National University of Singapore. He's also the chairman of the Workplace Health Committee at the Workplace Safety and Health Council. Welcome to do the studio, Dean. Thank you. Now, Prof, let's start with understanding what exactly are the most common workplace health and safety hazards to our personal well-being in the office. I think most of the time when we talk about workplace safety and health issues, we tend tend to think that uh, it is related to factories and uh, construction sites. Mm. But there are actually a lot of uh, workplace safety and health issues uh, in the office environment. Um, and when we talk about office environment, we usually would think of uh, in terms of um, uh, ergonomic issues like musculoskeletal uh, problems, mm. as you have uh, outlined in the um, uh, study that was done by Singapore General Hospital. Mm-hmm. But when we look at uh, how the office environment actually kills us, I think it uh, firstly has to do with uh, chronic diseases because the office environment actually encourages a sedentary kind of lifestyle. Mm. I thought um, you were going to say bosses then, but okay, well, I'll both, go with yours. Well, that as well. The <laughs> bosses do cause uh, us to have uh, quite a bit of mental stress. Um, but I think the sedentary lifestyle uh, uh, is one that actually um, is very unhealthy. Mm. Um, There's a study, for example, that says that uh, among those people who do not exercise outside of their office uh, hours, uh, sitting at work uh, most of the time in the day uh, actually have two times higher risk than of dying than those who do not uh, sit uh, much at their workplace. Two times higher risk risk of dying. Dying of what? Dying from any conditions, right. right? In in particular, dying from say the chronic diseases like heart diseases and stroke and so forth. Mm-hmm. And and I think basically what it is trying to say is that um, just by working in the office and sitting down too much, it reflects a kind of sedentary type of lifestyle and unhealth generally unhealthy kind of lifestyle. So that is associated with the the office environment. And the office environment just doesn't, um, it's not conducive right? yeah. as, as it is right now uh, for us to be more active. Right? So it's important to, to recognize that. So I think apart from uh, ergonomic issues that I think we will try and address perhaps later, I think a bigger issue is this whole idea of having a sedentary kind of Mm. lifestyle Mm. that the office environment encourages. So let's all just quit our jobs and get out of the office? Is that what you're suggesting, Prof? (laughs) Um, I think the office environment is something that uh, we can't run away from. Mm. right? But I think there are things that we can do both within the office as well as outside of the office um, that can try to mitigate this issue. Mm. Let's start with outside of the office. Yep. So, of course, I think outside of the office is how do you increase your physical activity mm. while you're not at work. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the, the, the one thing that, of course, we always try to encourage is that to have more physical activity mm. exercises as part of our leisure activity. I think that is good, but 
I think what is also important is to how to have physical activity as part and parcel of our life. Mm, lifestyle changes, yep. actually walk to work. Yep. So things like simple things like walking to work, uh, simple simple things like uh, you know spending more time uh, uh, walking from point A to point B mm. rather than say finding uh, you know a transport your know, means of walking from point A to point B. Don't bother trying to find money to buy that car. That's right. You Killing know. two birds with one stone. Yep. And even things like, say, taking public transport. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, the amount of walking that you do, say, uh, going down to MRT stations, going down to the bus stops, mm. and then from the bus stops back to where your destination is, uh, that actually encourages a lot of uh, physical activity. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one important point to remember about uh, physical activity um, as part of our daily life is that the aim is not to reduce weight. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times we try to aim at uh, f- exercise and physical activity to reduce weight. The aim is to actually reduce the onset of chronic diseases like diabetes. Now what's right? the difference between uh, moving more to try and reduce weight and moving more so that I can avoid diseases like this? I think by by uh, the phys- the amount of physical activity to reduce the risk of chronic disease is actually less mm-hmm. than compared to say for example the amount of physical activity that is needed to try to reduce our weight or to reduce our BMI. Um, so I think we shouldn't be discouraged if we try to be regular in terms of our increase our physical activity and yet do not seem to reduce our weight mm. right so so i don't think we should be discouraged that it is not working that's not true and it's also to try and avoid the stress factor right i have to move now otherwise and you know if i'm not dropping the pounds what's the point of me moving more anyway and therefore i don't move at all Back on Need to Know with me, Daphne Lim, talking about how the office work actually is killing you and how we can uh, try and prevent that murder there. Talking to Prof Chia Ki Singh, he is the Dean of Sorsui Hock School of Public Health at National University of Singapore, as well as the Chairman of the Workplace Health Committee. Prof, we left off talking about uh, chronic diseases, how we can uh, re- well reduce the effects or the potential of chronic diseases in the office by activities outside of the office how about in the office what can we do there yep so i think the uh, second point is that uh, within the workplace uh, environment we must find ways whereby we can actually increase in terms of our physical activity um, so for example avoiding sitting down too much mm-hmm. right? or running away from your boss <laughs> <laughs> well actually running away from a boss actually increase your physical activity yes, exactly. so that's a good uh, way, way of uh, fantastic exercising. so that's one idea for you guys out there uh, two, killing two birds with one stone yet again so I think uh, one practical way is actually to have uh, standing meetings mm-hmm. instead of having sit down meetings standing um, meetings yep, organize your meetings uh, standing up Right, and uh, actually, that will kill two birds with one stone. It improves and increases physical activity, as well as at the same time, it deals with some of your musculoskeletal kind of uh, complaints due to poor posture, poor ergonomics. Have you seen this happen before? Meetings where everybody is standing. Well, it's not easy. I'm trying to, um, you know, institute that uh, within our own school of public health. Mm. Um, and uh, you, you find, for example, sometimes at uh, sitting meetings where you have a uh, long meetings, a couple of people will stand up, especially those with a backache. Yeah. You know? um, actually, that is a pretty good way of uh, trying to stretch, trying to, to do a bit more physical activity. Um, and, and I think if we can have actually standing meetings at the workplaces, I mean, even for, for both of you, you know, who, who are <laughs> in this uh, radio station, um, you know, earlier on, I saw some of you standing up and reading the news, standing that, that's up. That's for very that's practical good. purposes yeah. because we can't reach all five computers at the same time that's and talk. That's true. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I think standing up, um, doing what you are doing is great. You know, it, mm. um, it improves your posture, uh, it improves the amount of physical activity that you actually do you know, at the workplace. So, so I think practically, and that's a cheap uh, solution, mm. in fact, your meetings will be kept very short. 
Yeah. And plus, and you save so much on chairs. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, so things like, for example, uh, instead of having uh, regular kind of meeting tables, have tall tables, for example, just like a bar counter, you know? ah. and uh, just gather around uh, that area and 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 uh, organize your meetings uh, around those, you know. Uh, before um, everybody goes out and implement implements this across <laughs> the board in your companies, can I just speak out for the ladies who have to be on heels? Uh, this might not sit very well with them. Huh? Yeah. So, and just a word of caution there. Well, kick off your high heels and 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 walk around barefooted you know, in the <laughs> office. Practical <laughs> solutions indeed. What else can we do? And I think the the other uh, thing in the office that uh, can be actually done is uh, in terms of uh, the diet. Mm. Um, a lot of uh, workplaces with canteens and with vending machines, um, I think watch the kind of food that is being supplied. Um, when it comes to this area of um, healthy lifestyle, there's always this tendency that to think that um, it is up to the individual to choose to have healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a lot of research finding now that goes to suggest that you cannot leave the responsibility to the individual. Mm -hmm. You must make the environment conducive for the individual. If the environment is conducive, it makes it much easier mm -hmm. for the individual to choose to have a healthy lifestyle. So take, for example, just walk around your workplace and look at the vending machines. Mm -hmm. What kind of drinks are served there? Yes. Right? Uh, most of the time you will have sodas and Cokes and each can of Coke, each can of Pepsi have nine to 10 teaspoons full of sugar. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> it really gives you a sugar rush, right? But uh, that is already the quota for the day. Each day, we are not to have more than 10 teaspoonful of sugar. Yeah. You know, either in our drinks, in our desserts, right? And one can of Coke, one can of Pepsi, that's a trick. Do you hear that, Prof? That's uh, diabetes calling, knocking mm. on our doors. And also, just have a look around your canteen and try and give an estimate of how many foods there are actually fried uh, or really, really stir-fried in a lot of oil. It'll be quite frightening to uh, quite a few of us who are experiencing how office work is killing us. We are talking to Prof Chia Ki Singh. We'll be back on Need to Know in just a moment. <laughs> Back on Need to Know with me, Daphne Lim on 938 Live with my guest, the good prof, Prof Chia Ki Singh. He is the Dean of Sorsui Hawkett School of Public Health and National University of Singapore, as well as the Chairman of the Workplace Health Committee at the Workplace Safety and Health Council. We were talking about how the sedentary lifestyle in our office is killing us. Uh, we are very much at higher risk of chronic diseases, but we are also looking at uh, these aches and pains that come from office work in general as well, aren't we, Prof? Yeah, so this are called what we call uh, musculoskeletal uh, problems mm -hmm. and uh, aches and pains that you get because of um, poor posture, sitting down too much at the workplace, um, the uh, workstation design that we have mm -hmm. in terms of our computers and the keyboards. Um, and the, the problem is actually the, um, um, quite large. Uh, we did a survey at, back at our school uh, on about 30 companies ranging from uh, heavy industry to mm. even service um, kind of um, uh, industry plus even the hotels. Um, and musculoskeletal problems in the office accounts for almost 40 to 60 percent of the workers um, do complain of uh, constant uh, muscle aches wow. and bone aches. But the, the good news is this, that um, we actually instituted a, just a simple two-week um, uh, orientation program mm -hmm. to just explain what's the cause of all these uh, aches and pain and what are some simple measures that you can do to, right. to relieve that. And essentially from 40 to 60%, it drops down within you know, uh, three to four weeks, it drops down to between say 20 to 30%. Really? So, so there, there are uh, many simple solutions mm. that, that can be done. Uh, one is for example, what I've described earlier on, 
uh, stretching yourself, taking more cons- uh, more breaks in between, um, and and um, uh, simple solutions without you know really n- needing to make changes to say for example the tables or the chairs. Mm. Um, so a lot of this kind of simple solutions, understanding what actually caused it, um, can already reduce it by quite uh, quite dramatically. Hmm. Uh, the key, of course, is how to sustain that. Yes, hmm. yes, because a lot of people, I mean, when they're absorbed in their work, you know, it's very hard to actually get up, remind yourself to do a little bit of stretching, to actually walk to the cooler or even go and chit-chat to a friend just so you can get that kind of activity in. Is there anything they can do at their desk already that will alleviate some of these pains and aches? Yeah, I think the Workplace Safety and Health Council have some of these guides, for example, in terms of the workstation, how should it be designed. Mm. Um, and and uh, But the I think a simple rule of thumb is to make sure, for example, your monitor is at uh, eye level. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, so actually working off a notebook is actually quite bad because you literally have to look down at yeah. your monitor. Yeah. So if you if you still you know if you still like to have a notebook as your main kind of uh, working machine, uh, have an extra monitor that when you are in your office connect that to to your notebook and read off from the monitor. Right. Make sure that the monitor is at eye level. If it is not uh, an adjustable kind of monitor, just put three or four. Uh, telephone books and put your monitor on top of that. And put those telephone books to very good (laughs) use indeed. Now we go to some of these offices and the monitors are huge because these are designers or whatever it is that they need at such huge screens. Sometimes they have two, three, four screens to work off of. Uh, What should they do then? And uh, where's eye level for them? Because these monitors are really, really big. Yeah, I think for, for those kind of monitors, you basically will have to arrange them, you know, in a row and make sure that they are all at eye level. You mm-hmm. know, the middle of the monitor, for example, is at your eye level. Okay. Uh, having big monitors is actually very good because it doesn't strain your eyes. So mm-hmm. I'm not a designer. I got a huge monitor in my office. <laughs> right? uh, because Just I'm, because you like it. Yeah, and, and because <laughs> I'm vain, I don't want to wear glasses. So so I will enlarge the font size, you know, to 20, 25. Don't you have to sit further me. back though? Nope. So, so the basically, is uh, I put the monitor quite far, you know, at the okay. edge of my desk, and uh, essentially, you know, I stand up, mm-hmm. and then as I'm standing up, it is at my uh, eye level. So yeah. when you're standing up, it's at your eye level. So you do practice this standing up and working thing in your own office as well. Oh yeah. So so I stand up uh, when when I'm uh, working in my office instead mm-hmm. of sitting down. I have a very uh, high table and uh, arrange it in such a way that the keyboard is uh, at my arm level where, mm-hmm. when I'm uh, bent at 90 degrees and then the, um, the monitor is at my eye level. So my monitor is propped up by about four telephone books. What about what we sit on? I know there's, a, there's this fad right now where people actually buy their huge or bring their huge exercise balls into the office and, and work off of those. Do you recommend those? That? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 there, there are some kind of uh, chairs as well as some kind of um, uh, all this exercise ball whereby you sit on. Uh, it basically forces you to sit straight and sit upright. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, when we have a back to most of our seat, and especially those that are poorly designed, we tend to slouch. Mm. Whereas if without the back, you tend to sit more upright. Yeah? Um, and, and it takes a long while to kind of get used to it. It takes a long while to change our habits. Yeah. Right? Um, and I think it's not just the posture in the office, it's also your posture back at home, your, your posture as, you know, on the weekends. You yeah. know. Um, all this have to be taken together yeah. right, to, to, to ensure that you actually change your habit, change mm-hmm. your lifestyle. But we do spend a lot of time in the office, so that's maybe right. that's where we should start. Says the girl who's basically slouching on her bed most weekends anyway. I'm talking to Prof Chia Ki Singh and we will be coming back to talk about what else you can do to your work environment so that the office work does not kill you. We'll be back on Need to Know. Nah.
Back on Need to Know with me, Daphne Lim, and my, well, the good prof, Chiaki Singh. He is the chairman of the Workplace Health Committee at the Workplace Safety and Health Council, telling us how we can save ourselves from the office. I say just leave, just leave right now. It's already like five minutes to eight. I hope you're st- not still in the office. Now, prof, what can companies as a whole do to improve the, the ergonomics of the office without having to spend thousands of dollars on, in changing furniture? I think the first thing is um, educating both the management as well as the office uh, staff Mm. um, to recognize um, um, what are the causes of all these problems. Um, A lot of times actually having someone from outside to come in to observe the work practices Mm. uh, will help to identify what are the causes of some of this uh, aches and pains and Mm -hmm. musculoskeletal problems. So I'm sure you've walked into offices before and you've seen, you've identified the problems. What are the more more common ones that you've seen that have really caused these uh, muscular problems? I think the, the most common is actually the work rest cycle. The amount mm-hmm. of uh, the the length of uh, hours or the duration that is need that a worker needs to spend at the uh, workstation mm. versus the rest breaks. So sometimes simple things like restructuring the uh, work rest cycle mm-hmm. improves a lot. So it's not so much the actual physical furniture being too high or being too low or anything like that, or somebody just too lazy to adjust their seat. It is actually about when they decide to take a rest. That's correct. So, so I think even if you have the most ergonomically designed furniture or workstation, mm-hmm. if you spend too much time on it, you will still compl- you will still have all these aches and pains. Mm. Yeah. So, like earlier on, we we're discussing that um, you can have a very well designed, ergonomically designed mouse, mm. and you can keep running, uh, playing around with that mouse. Uh, essentially, we are not created to play with a mouse, right? <laughs> um, so, so no matter how well designed that mouse is, excessive use will still give you all these musculoskeletal problems. So, what kind of uh, work rest cycle would you recommend? I think if for some people who are working at, say, for example, data entry, for example, um, I think every you know 40, 45 minutes having a 10 minutes break mm. from that uh, uh, routine actually mm-hmm. helps a lot. So about and once an hour. Yeah, know, once an hour for 10 yeah. to 15 minutes, you know, break every hour. That, that actually helps uh, uh, a, a lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, all this actually have been shown also to improve productivity. Mm. Right? Um, whereas if you just say that uh, you need to do that, um, you know, before for two to three hours before you take a break, you know, that actually hampers productivity. Yeah. So, so this uh, design in terms of uh, work rest cycle, I think is uh, pretty important. Um, yeah, that's others- fantastic advice. And I'm afraid we are going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time, Prof. Talking to Prof Chiaki Singh, he is the chairman of the Workplace Health Committee uh, of the Workplace Safety and Health Council. I'm Daphne Lim. This has been Need to Know.